This is cross-examination. I can't make a statement. You don't know what the person they will ask you. Answer his okay. questions. That's all. one by all one. All right. I was at Kaduna. And you are a party to the preparation and execution of the attempted coup of January 15, 1966. I was a party to the failed coup of January 1966. Yes. Now listen, it was listen, who listen my friend, we're not here but for stories. What I'm trying to tell you is Restrict this. yourself to my ans answers to my questions, please. Now, you gave consideration to the fact that Opara was expecting a guess. Not but expecting, he had a guess. Yes, he had a guess. As soon listen as he now, a guess listen. To the airport, he was arrested. Listen to the question. Now, in in some of the books written by some of your coup plotters, you had to wait for Sir Ahmad Bello to return from Lesser Hajj to execute the coup. I wrote that in my book. Yes, why did you do that? And if the intention was the not truth. to deliberately kill him. It is the truth. If you did not wait for him to return, he might bring in troops from abroad, particularly from Saudi Arabia. Or from any of the uh, Islamic countries. Why didn't you wait for Dr. Azikwe to come back? I haven't even thought about Azikwe because, you see, he was so innocuous that, in fact, as far as we were concerned, he, he was not endangering anybody. January 15, 1966 is one of the most significant days in Nigerian military history. The unprecedented events of January 15 have significantly altered the trajectory of the nation's political and military history forever. It is so significant that I have dedicated a few videos to the explanation of the events of that day. I have provided links in the description so you can check them out if you haven't already done so. For the benefits of my new subscribers, I will summarize the events leading up to that fateful day and the catastrophic effects that have followed up until this day. In the summer of 1965, a group of young Nigeria army officers started meeting to discuss the decaying state of the nation and the best ways to salvage it. After months of meeting discreetly, the core planners came up with a program of actions including taking over the reins of government in a military revolution as they termed it, to permanently rid Nigeria of corruption and set it on the path of economic progress and prosperity. The core of the mutinous officers was made up of the trio of Majors Kadna Nzeogu, Emmanuel Ifejona and Adewale Ademoyega. By the end of 1965, the trio had co-opted many other young officers, mostly of Igbo origins from around the country, to actively participate in the revolution. Some of the officers co-opted into the revolution were Majors Humphrey Chukuka, Don Okafo, Timothy Nwategu, Kristen Anuforo, Chude Soke, and Captains Obienu, Captain Nwobosi, Captain Abisoye, Captain Udeaja, Captain Iweanya, and Captain Ben Bullier, among others. The young officers swung into action in the early hours of January 15th, and just a few hours into the operation, their plans had started falling apart. Having escaped arrest and possible assassination by the mutinous officers, the General Officer Commanding General Agui Ronsi 
was compelled to take over the reins of government, thus putting the nation's nascent democracy on hold. By 4 p.m., the mutiny had been squashed by Iran's men, but not before some unrecoverable damage had been done. Top politicians, senior military officers, their wives and staff had been assassinated in the botched coup. Some of the casualties were the Prime Minister, Sir Abubakar Tafawa Balewa, the Sadawna of Sokoto, Sir Ahmadu Bello, the Premier of Western Region, Samuel Akintola, the Finance Ministers, Festus Okoti Ebo, the two GOCs, Brigadier Samuel Ademulegun and Brigadier Maimalari Zakaria, Colonel Raf Shode Indi, Colonel Ko Mohammed, Lieutenant Colonel James Palm, Lieutenant Colonel Abogo Lagama, and Lieutenant Colonel Arthur Unegbe. Following the failure of the coup, coupled with the assassination of senior government officials, mostly from the northern region, and the emergence of General Agui Ronsi and Ibo as the new head of state, rumors of an Igbo-dominated tribal war began to circulate in the northern region. By July 1966, northern soldiers, mostly from the rank and file, staged a bloody counter-coup where thousands of Igbo soldiers and civilians were killed in retaliation. The situation continued to deteriorate until it led to one of the darkest times in Nigeria's history, a civil war that lasted almost three years where millions of Nigerians lost their lives. On this episode of Oputa Panel, we have one of the key planners of the January 1966 coup, Captain Ben Boulier, who gives us an insight into the headspace of the revolutionary officers, what they were thinking, and how their plans fell apart. I personally think this is history gold, and every Nigerian should listen to this man with an open mind. Please keep the comments civil. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the channel with your friends. And drop us a comment. Let us know what you think about Captain Ben Boulier. And let us know if you think what he's saying makes sense or nonsense. Ben Boulier is being cross-examined by Yahaya Mahmoud, counsel to Arewa Consultative Forum. He is in the witness box as a witness for Ohanese Indigbo. Between the 14th and 16th of January 1966. Whether you are in Lagos, in Enugu, or in Kaduna. My Lord... My Lord, I have made exhaustive statement on this issue. At any point. This is cross examination. I can't make a statement. You don't know what the person they will ask you. Answer his okay. questions. That's all. One by all one. All right. I was at Kaduna. And you are a party to the preparation and execution of the attempted coup of January 15th, 1966. I was a party to the failed coup of January 1966. Yes. You, your final plan towards the coup was discussed and agreed upon during your exercise at Kachia. There is no truth on that at all. Okay. I did not go to Kachia for any exercise to start with. Very good. I attended a battle group course at no, you, have, you, have answered, you, well you have answered the question. In Kaduna, the operation or the attempted coup was led by Major Chukuma Nzebu. Correct. Yes. After the Premier of Northern Nigeria, late Sir Ahmad Bello was murdered along with his wife, and the Governor of Northern Nigeria was arrested. Chukuma made a broadcast suspending the government of Northern Nigeria. That is correct. He also suspended the legislature of Northern Nigeria. That is absolutely correct. In Ibadan, one Captain Umobusi led the operation where the Premier Chiba Kintola was killed. No, that is correct. But the government of Western Nigeria was not suspended. If you know, if you don't know, say you don't know. It is not a question of not knowing or knowing. I know it was not suspended very quickly. Because good. of No, that's reason. all right. That's exactly. all right. That's all right. Now, at the federal level, the president, Dr. Nmandi Azikwe, was out of the country. 
the Prime Minister, late Sir Abakra Tapa Barewa, and the Minister, Honorable Minister of Finance were murdered or were killed, and the federal government was not suspended. At the federal level? Yes. You don't see aborted the coup? So, and he runs it took over, isn't it? He aborted the coup. He aborted at, the coup of January 66. Yes, at the time those who organized the coup suspended the government of Northern Nigeria. The federal government was not suspended. The coup took place on the 14th, 15th night. Yes. By the following day, Zogu made a broadcast. When did By the, the following day, Irunzi had aborted the coup in Lagos. Are you aware of the fact that is, uh, Gen uh, Major General Ironsi announced that the power was handed over to him by the remaining members of the Council of Ministers Irons through Dr. Orizu. Are you aware? My Lord, Ironsi was not part of us. I didn't, say, was, I didn't say he was part of you. Ironsi was a reactionary. And listen, listen to the question. What please. he said or what he did was his business. It is also the business of this commission. It is our business. If you know, please answer you know. Were you aware that Ironsi announced that the remaining members of the Council of Ministers through Dr. Orizu... I had it over the radio. Very good. Handed over power to him to restore... I had it over the radio. Thank you very much. It was because Major General Ironsi aborted the coup and declared the organizers of that coup as mutineers. That was why you people were arrested. And detained, yes. Yes. You were detained, but you were never tried. You are absolutely correct. Yes. Now, it is also correct that four senior commissioned and combatant military officers in Lagos, Brigadier Maimalari, Colonel Kur Mohammed, Lieutenant Colonel Pam, and Lieutenant Colonel Lagerma, were killed during that coup. You are very correct. But let me add. No, I, I don't want you I to must add. add. I don't want you to add, please. Be, but I you must answer add. My, you answer my question. My please. Lord, this is an occasion for preferring information. You had your I time. I must add. You had your time. This is my time, please. I must add to clarify what you are saying. My Lord, let him answer my question. I must give question. you information. You talked about no, our not being. Hold it, please. Yes. Keep it cool. Right. I thought we were on a fine facting crusade. Exactly. I must ask. So can you prevent him adding to the fact that we help us? But if it's a catechism, yes and no. Yes. yes it's a straightforward what, what, what question. I don't know what he wants to add, add, my lord. Uh, well, under the rules of examination and cross-examination, you let a witness answer your question. And he answered my question. The way I you have like. not finished. I must add that we were not tried. But even when Gawan took over after the overthrow of Ironsi, he did not try us. If that is all he did not add, try us. If that is all Our leader, he answered questions. Listen, yes, he sir. has to ask another question. Yes, sir. I don't know what you are answering. You listen to his questions. All right. Now, you answered questions earlier that there was a coup in Kaduna where the political leaders were killed. There was a coup in Lagos where the Prime Minister and Minister of Finance were killed and there was a coup in Ibadan. There was no coup in Enugu, no attempted coup in Enugu. There and was. Listen now. There was no takeover of government or murder or assassination of anybody in Enugu and Midwest. And this I explained in my book, Nigeria's Five Majors. Thank you very much. Now, you did not make any attempt to arrest Ironsi. An attempt was made. In fact, I'm told that it was, uh, if I may say this right now, and that it was Colonel Pan who phoned him and alerted him and he fled. You did not make any attempt to arrest Ojuku in Kano. An attempt, you haven't read my book. You should have read my book. I'm not interested in your book. I want okay. to know. Okay, an to attempt the facts. was made to arrest him. An attempt was made to call people in Kano. And you don't see it right. I'm sorry. I'm awfully sorry about talking about the UNC. Ojuku arrested our man. And it's, it's my book, and you know it. You have a copy of there. there. In Kaduna, you also killed Brigadier Ademolokun and Colonel Shodendi, who are the only two senior Yoruba officers there. Brigadier Ademolegu was killed. There is no doubt in that. What of Colonel Shodendi? Shodendi was killed. It's all in my book. I've, I mean, Thank you should read it. Thank you very much. Yes. I want to hear what you will say on oath here, not in your book. All right. Okay. May it please my Lord, I'm sorry to interrupt. There is evidence already before this commission 
about the coup. I, um, my learned friend has been going on about who and who were killed. Exhibit 8 is a book written by him where, <laughs> pardon, in 1981, where he listed all these things he's asking him now. Yes. The issue here, if there are any untrue statements in the book, which is in evidence, he wants to clarify as affecting the AC, ACF. Let him put it to him, but to continue to rehearse the evidence given before, I think. Well, I don't want to appear as uh, asking too many questions, but in cross examination and in examination in chief and re examination, there's this thing called notorious facts. Is that correct? My Lord, it depends. Many, many books have been written, all these things are there. My Lord, he We've read the, all of them. He is the only surviving person who participated in the coup. Absolutely was he, wrong. He was he in Kaduna? All right, ask. Yes. If there's something like notorious fact, you can address us on them. But if they're notorious, they're notorious. My Lord, my Lord, he then, is wrong. I'm not, the, you question, I'm not the only one surviving. Nobody asked you a question nope. yet. You are so one of the survivors. Go on. Now, when you are, from the records, we saw that when you are being cross-examined by the council to the commission in Enugu, you said it was the North that waged war on Biapra. The North, in fact, the first division from the North descended on Biafra from Onsuka. Is that the first division of Northern Nigerian Army? Of course, it is not first division of Northern Nigerian Army, but it was commanded by the Northern troops, that Northern officers and men. And that's your basis of saying it was the North that waged war on Biafra. I said actually it was Nigeria that waged war, not Biafra waging war on Nigeria. So no, you not. said you said the North in your evidence. It Spen must be Lipsus Linguae. Thank you very much. Now you said. It was in your book and in your evidence that the coup at 1966 January was long overdue. That was what I felt. That was my opinion. Do you still feel that a military coup is the best solution to political problems of countries such as Nigeria? Now, as you are there now on all The situation in 1966 cannot by any means be equated to the situation now in Nigeria. Now, do you, do you agree? Now, what I'm saying is, maybe you don't understand my question. I do understand your question. In 1966, how I felt then might not necessarily be how I feel now. Okay. Do you still believe that military as an alternative to political government or to democratic government is the best solution? Right now that I am an old man, you I feel otherwise. Okay. And you know that that first attempt you made was the beginning of the military in into democratic rule. You are Nigeria. very right. Thank it you. is not the handover or, you know, button changing that you keep having okay. after that. Okay. Now, the Ohaneze petition and your evidence said there was to be a planned jihad on January 17th. It came from your evidence. I said it's in my book which yes. was published in 1981. Listen to my question, please. Yes, I, I said so. Now, immediately after say, talking about the jihad, they said the coupists. There's nothing to talk Listen now, those who planned the coup, the they same thing. They are coup plotters. Not yes, the coup plotters, it doesn't matter. The coup plotters were to install Chip Aolo as the president. That's what they planned to do. Which of them, those who planned the jihad or your own, those who you planned... See, you talk about planning the jihad. Those of us concerned with the coup of January 66 did not plan any jihad. Yes. In fact, they carried the coup, they moved fast to preempt jihad. That's what I said. Listen. And no. it's so well recorded. No, it's no question of well recorded. You see, you planned a coup. Beautiful. The Ohaneze petition alleged that that coup was to prevent a jihad on the 17th. Beautiful. The following sentence in their petition says, those coup plotters wanted to install Chief Aolo as the president of Nigeria. Something is amiss somewhere. 
Is, so, it, is it your group that wanted to install Chief Aolo or the jihadists? That's all I want you to declare to the committee. The book I tendered here is very specific on it. Aolo was to come and be the head of government. That's your arrangement? Our own, yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Now you said elsewhere that failure to execute successfully the coup in Enugu yes. was what led to the civil war. See, again, you haven't read my book, I'm or you not, didn't even listen, hear what I said. Listen, I read your evidence before the commission in Enugu, then certified, that's, certified true copy from the That's commission. not what I said. Let me tell you exactly what, what I said. What did you say? You did a coup in July 1966. There were two coups in Nigeria in There was a coup. I didn't Just a minute. Let me tell you what I said. Okay. I said that the failure of the second coup, that is the, the July coup, failure of the July coup to succeed at Enugu was the one that caused the civil war. It is not the first coup. I didn't the say the first coup. I said July. I didn't take part in July coup. You did. <laughs> Listen, you said failure of the coup in Enugu was what led to the civil war. Is that Fa what? Failure of the July coup to succeed at Enugu was the one that led to the civil war. How? If you can explain. Let comment. me explain. Because the coup failed, Ojuku, who was the governor of Eastern Region at, the, at that time, was neither killed nor arrested. Ojuku started actually contesting the legality of Gawans taking over power. And it is this contestation of uh, you know, the legality that brought about the sharp division between the East and Lagos. All right? And it is this that led to Aburi. It is this that led to the civil war. In fact, it is the one that was responsible. And in fact, I place the blame on the doorstep of those who did the coup of July 1966. That's what I said. So those who planned the coup of July 1966 and Colonel Ojuku were responsible for the civil war. Is that what you're saying? You can put it out after your fashion. Thank what you. I know is that had they succeeded, you see, you were blaming January coup for not taking place at Enugu. And yet you didn't blame the, Ju you didn't blame the July coup for not succeeding at Enugu. The difference is that the January coup failed. The July coup did not fail. Exactly. If right. January coup had failed, I wouldn't be sitting here answering okay. questions. You would have made me major general or something. <laughs> Now, do you believe that Igbos are being marginalized? Of course, Igbos are being marginalized. Okay. Let me tell you something. Wait, I, you have answered my question. Now, one of your witnesses said, Igbos are everywhere in this country and doing everything. They are so friendly and they are involved in every trade and business in every nook and corner of this country. Is that how you appreciate Answer the question. Is that how you apprise uh, marginalization? The question. Every individual. Let me tell you what is wrong with this country. So, sorry, Every my lord. Every individual. My lord, I want to answer my question. on his own. Every individual. So Ibo's being everywhere shows that Ibo's are the best Nigerians. They are the best Nigerians. They are everywhere. They you are should, true Nigerians. You should have waited for my question. No, but I must. I must preempt even your question. You see, Ibo's. If you are talking about marginalization, it isn't in terms of Igbos individually working as individuals. In what context is the marginalization? Exactly. For instance, the question of appointments, the question of things that belong to us in general, in fact, even the question of depriving Igbos of their rights. This is marginalization. Now, you said in the Ohanese petition, that Igbos are only one out of 400 ethnic groups in this country. You agree? Could you please restrict yourself to the statements I made? You are I, supposed to answer my questions. I if you don't know, say you don't know. Uche Chukumereja has answered that kind of question. I am dealing with January coup. Dealing with January coup. And that Ohaneze has partitioned everything. My compartment is January coup 66. My friend, you are here at the witness of the commission. And it is my right to ask you questions 
and you have an obligation to answer them. If you don't know how to answer, say you don't know. The truth you is, is that you say that I falsified health story. I want to know I where say, in my statement it is in your letter. I want to know where in my statement I, I said falsified it is in history. the record of Ohanese and you are their witness. And you agree with me that Ohanese are complaining of marginalization. Of course. Now, do you agree with what Ohanese said? I agree that Ohanese is right in saying that Igbos are marginalized. And they are also right in saying that there are over 400 ethnic groups in Nigeria. There are too many, even more than 400 if you like. And you also agree with what they said, that the Igbos constitute about 16% of the population of this country. I would have said actually 25%. Okay. <laughs> now, now do, you have any, do you have any statistics to show that the Igbos in appointments do not have up to 25% in the federal service. Do you my have any statistics? My if Lord, you don't have, say you don't let have. me answer it. Don't rush me. How can you have statistics when we don't have true census figures in Nigeria? I'm not talking How of... How can you? You are talking about statistics. Let Look, us have census figures first. Because we don't have census figures, then we, have, we don't have statistics. Then you are imagining appointments in federal. A lot of people are dreaming dreams in this country. Some people put the, the, uh, the population of this Nigeria at 120 million. Some said 100. Some said 100. When are we going to have our figures? True figures. Please answer my question. We are talking about appointments. You said you are being marginalized in appointments. Do you have any statistics? to show that you do not have up to 25%. Ohaneza can it. supply that, Please. and I believe that Ohaneza has supplied that. They have me. not supplied it. Well, you go to Ohaneza to supply it. No. Let me go on what I know. Now, military regimes, just like the one you wanted to bring in, come on their own. And when they rule, they rule as military regimes. Sometimes, not all the time. Not all the time. If you like, I name your military regimes that use civilians to get on with rulership or governance. Just, just like civilians use you in 66. There was no, or well, there was never any military regime in this country that ruled without civilians. Fair that enough. That ruled without civilians. Good. I'm happy you are confirming it. That's what I said. Yes. And there, is, there was never any military regime in this country that ruled without representation from across this country. You As don't, we never ruled Nigeria. No, I'm not we about. of January 66 never ruled Nigeria, so you are not in a position to know who should have been in the government if we actually wanted to rule Nigeria. Okay. Now, in 1966, 60% of the officers of the Nigerian army were Igbos. 60% of the officer corps were of the That is, in fact, an estimate, yes. Yes. And... At that time, from your evidence and your book, one yeah. of the things worrying the Igbo officers was that there was the Nigerianization of the army and some people were insisting on quota. You that know, I, I took advantage of Nigerianization of the army. So I could not condemn Nigerianization of the army. No, I'm not saying you... What, I took, what we took it, ex, uh, uh, I'm sorry, ex, exception from was the question of any anybody in trousers becoming an officer that's what we took exception from okay now when you left the army as a captain yes of course yes i didn't leave the army i was bundled into prison okay and then from there dismissed or retired up till tomorrow we were not tried so i don't know whether it's dismissed or retired and all this is because you are involved in the january 66 exactly General and as I told you, you, are, you, even Gawan did not try us. Yes. Rather, he gave 
one of us our leader he gave our leader a military burial and gave him full military honors whilst he detained us and you could kill Hironsi for for not trying us and he left that gentleman for not trying us either now at the time you planned the coup or you were planning the coup you knew that if the coup failed your career in the army is finished fantastic you are right then why, I knew. Yes. Then why were you complaining that some of your mates were major generals? You see, the trouble is that you they didn't don't plan understand. a coup. They were good Nigerians. That's why they became major generals. A lot of them became major generals because of coups. Successful and in fact, coups. They promoted themselves. You should have known that. Why are you laughing? You should have known that. They promoted themselves. That's why other countries laugh at us. Please go ahead. Yes, I will go ahead, Mr. Bule. <laughs> Mr. Bule, now in your book, you tried to state the reasons why you people gathered to organize the coup. You are right. Now, thinking of, thinking back now, do you still regard those reasons as valid? Very. For, listen for a military takeover instead of a democratic change of government you, you, under, you understand the question the reasons were as valid then as they are valid today the killings in the west and the killings in tv area prompted in fact an action from us and there were other reasons now other reasons they're all enumerated in the book i attended now you use the word the rank colonel now because you are promoted in the Biafran army. Beautiful. And, Ojuku, and I prefer it. And Ojuku also promoted himself. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I, I don't know. When he comes, you will ask him. Now, from certain publications we read, okay. credited to you, you were not in very good terms with Ojuku. I am happy you said this. Yes. In other words, I have my own views on every issue. I am happy you said this. Yes. Because I fought the war on the Biafran side. I, criti I criticized Ojuku for taking certain measures. And I'm happy you have my book there, The Fall of Biafra. I have my own views. Just as I had my own views in Nigeria when I was an army officer. And my views tallied with some views by other people. Now, do you, be, do you know that... Like I said earlier, in every corner of this country, there are Igbos living peacefully with other Nigerians. Living peacefully? Yes, with other Nigerians. Well, there are Igbos, correct, but living peacefully, I don't know. Because it's they are being murdered at every turn. They are being slaughtered at every turn. Anytime there was any riot, they are slaughtered. And you should have known that too. I, I, are you speaking on facts or on what you read on the pages of newspapers? Well... All I can tell you is that there's even a case here. There are, Akaloka there, case is still there are here. Igbos across northern and Nigeria. Probably what? Akaloka is, uh, is living happily, isn't he? Probably. Do you know what Akaloka did? You brought the issue. Do you know what Akaloka did? Do you know the facts? Whatever he did. Listen, do you know the facts? Whatever he did, he should have been subjected to the listen, rule of law. Listen, do you know the, the facts? The rule of law should have applied. Do you know the facts about Akaloka? You said that I listened to the radio and, and I, no. I read the papers. Look, I read the papers. Oh, so All I know is that he is not alive today. To even deny what he's been said to have done. Do you know that as a result of a Kaluka, 20 House of Lashu were killed? Said. That is what you said. We have not been told this. Have you sent any delegation to Ibo land to explain the Kaluka issue? Have you sent any delegation to Igbo You are not supposed to ask me questions. You have to answer oh, my I'm questions. I'm sorry. I'm awfully sorry, my lord. Okay. All I can tell you is that you are begging the question with regard to Akaloka because he's not around. He's dead already. Now, in your book, you warned Nzegu that because, listen now, that because of the number of Igbo officers organizing the January 66 coup, it could be misunderstood as an Igbo coup. 
Number one. Did you warn him, please? I didn't warn Nzegu. There what? was no Nzegu. That's uh. number one. Number two. I'm not an Igbo man. I may not know You must try name. and pronounce the words properly. Number two. I didn't warn Nzegu. Uh. If you read my book, I was discussing with Omar Tuegu. With whoever you are discussing, Good. you warned. Did I, you warn? Now, that let me explain that. Listen to the question first. I have listened to the question. <laughs> I, I leap ahead. Now, no, listen, I my friend, my friend, listen. I call you here to ask you questions. All right. Sir. And this is a court of law. This is not a military barrack, please. Uh -huh. Now, what you said in the book is that people may understand, may understand that coup as an evil coup because over 90% of those planning the coup were evils. Is that correct? That is not what I said. What did you say? What I said that people might uh -huh. take this to be an Igbo coup. Why? But I didn't say 90% why, why, was not there. Why did you say so? There was no 90%. Why did you say people Good. might? I asked Onwa Togu who and who are in this. He named certain people. Although he named Adem Oyega too, I felt, I felt that the Nigerian public being tribalistic would deem this as an Igbo coup. I, name, I said so. Very but good. that is what is called value judgment. Okay. In other words, not taking into consideration the facts. Now, you, if you read that thing down, you would have seen where he said, oh, but we are releasing our whole over. Do you know what I said? In other words, the Yorubas are using us. You, you failed to read that one. You, you read about the thing being an Igbo coup. I'm interested in the issue raised by Ohanese in your petition that it was wrong for anybody to assume it was an Igbo coup. It is wrong till tomorrow for anybody to assume that it's an Igbo coup. When that, pers that person would have, had, would have committed what is called value judgment. A judgment not based on facts. When that you, was what I meant. When you killed all the northern and Yoruba political and military leaders and you didn't kill your own? What about Colonel Unebe? And by the way, let me also explain. Colonel Unebe was killed in Lagos. Why? Not because, please, not because he did not hand over any key. I'm happy that IBM Haruna, a soldier, is here. He knows that no quartermaster general holds a key to anything. Amore. Why was he killed? He knows. He was killed. It's in my book, which I tendered. He was killed because he was accused of making money from his job. In other words, he, he was a quartermaster general. He was making money from his job. So he was enriching himself. So that he, was why he was killed. So he was not. So I want to correct this mistake. So he was not a victim of that attempted coup. Uh -uh. He was killed. No, listen. Brigadier Mamalari. Kur Muhammad and the rest were killed as part of the coup. This one was killed because he was making money. So he was not killed as part of the execution of that coup. Is that what you're saying? My Lord, there were various reasons why the coup took place. Okay. There were various, in fact, Hydra headed reasons why the coup took place. Some people enriched themselves and they were killed. Some people were involved in the killings in the West and the TV area, and they were killed. Some people did a lot of other unsavory things. By the way, they talk about killing, and I'm repeating what I said at Enugu. It was never decided that anybody should be killed. Now, why was Samut People Bello disagreed on what should happen. I don't know how many coups you've taken part in, but it is never decided this man must be killed, that person will be killed, but you depend on what you see on the ground. So if there is opportunity to kill, we kill. What do you mean by you depend on what you see on the ground? These are soldiers, you know. Uh. Depend on, for instance, if you are fired at, you fire back. All right? It's as simple as that. And I gave an example of somebody who wasn't killed. He was do, you, do you know why Sardona was killed along with his wife? Do you know? It's in the book. Simple. Why must I, why no, must I, I told you we need your evidence here. But the, the commission here has read my book. If they have not read my book, Nigerians, they probably are reading it now. Nigerians want to hear what you will say of the reason behind killing Sardona and his wife. You talk about killing again. I was not the okay, who went to the okay. house. Even though, I must tell you this, I take full responsibility for the coup of General 66 because it was a collective responsibility. Very good. Okay, are you aware right. of the reason from your coup plotters why Sedona was murdered with his wife? If you don't know the reason by now, then 
I'm afraid you should go and find out. My Lord, it's all in my book. My Lord, the witness should be told that he's supposed to answer. You my are whipping up emotions. I don't want to get involved in that. Answer a simple question simply. It will make us progress. And then when counsel is asking, you have no right to retort. All right, sir. Thank you, my lord. Sorry, my lord. Now you said there were all those reasons why they kill. Why was, if you know, Sadona killed along with his wife? Nzogu attacked Sadona's residence. Nzogu, if you read the, the script, was attacked himself. And that was why they had to so kill him. Nzogu returned fire. Nzogu, if he were alive but he's dead, would have told you exactly why he did what he did. What we wanted to do was to overthrow the government of Nigeria. To overthrow the government and stop madness. And overthrowing the government means suspending the government of northern Nigeria, leaving the government of western Nigeria, you see, and then deliberately refusing to arrest Iransi. Let, let me elucidate this matter. It is true that uh, Akintola was killed in the west. The, and then Fanny Kayode was arrested and taken to Lagos. That is the RV, rendezvous. Now, when the chaps, the soldiers, got to Lagos, they found that Iron's troops had, over, had already seized Lagos. And so they ran helter skelter. And as you well know, some people ran to Ghana, some ran to other places. And therefore, there was no time to declare anything in the West. You and, should have known that. And there was no time to arrest or kill Okpara in the East. Again, we talked about Okpara having been receiving somebody from abroad, a head of state from Cyprus, Macarius, yeah, Archbishop Macarius. You gave that a And he yes. was arrested as soon as. And by the way, one of you was the one who took over the radio station. Even though he's dead again and he's not, he can't say his own mind. Now, now listen, it was listen, Jalo who took over listen, the Listen, my friend, we're not here for, for stories. What I'm trying to tell you is Restrict this. yourself to my ans answers to my questions, please. Now, you gave consideration to the fact that Opara was expecting a guest. Not but expecting, he had a guest. Yes, he had a guest. As soon listen as he now, guest listen. Airport, he was arrested. Listen to the question. Now, in, in some of the books written by some of your coup plotters, you had to wait for Sir Ahmad Bello to return from Lesser Hajj to execute the coup. I wrote that in my book. Yes, why did you do that? And if the intention was the not truth. to deliberately kill him. It is the truth. If you did not wait for him to return, he might bring in troops from abroad, particularly from Saudi Arabia, or from any of the uh, Islamic countries. Why didn't you wait for Dr. Azikwe to come back? I haven't even thought about Azikwe because, you see, he was so innocuous that, in fact, as far as we were concerned, he, he was not endangering anybody. He was not because he is Igbo? No, not at all. Why? There were others who were not Igbos who were not endangering, endangering anyone. What about Awolo? Was now, he killed? Now, listen. Recently, you know Chief Ajuluchuku? I know Chief Ajuluchuku. Ajuluchuku is my brother. Yes. yes. He recently gave an interview. Yes. And he said Dr. Azikwe was aware of the coup and that was why he left the country. Are you aware of that? Simple. Say that again, please. That Dr. Azikwe was aware of the planned coup and that was why he ran out of the country. If Ajulukuchuku said that... It's not the issue. Whether you if two are aware, said, that's the question. No, 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 no. You don't put words into anybody's mouth. If Ajulukuchuku said that, he is entitled to his own views altogether. I want but to hear I'll your be own surprised. View. I want to hear your own view. But I will be surprised, in fact, shocked if Ajulukuchuku ever said that. He but did. all the same, I yeah. said I will be shocked because you people are prone to, you know, putting words into people's mouth. Now, the thing is this. With yes. regard to uh, Zeke knowing or not knowing, we were anti Zeke. If you recall that Nzogu talked to Kasakashim Ibrahim, he said these people like Azik, we were an Okbara and others we were looking for. If you recall, and it's written down in black and white in but your own books. That is not the question. The question is simple. You, are you aware 
that Zeke knew about the coup and that was why how he could ran. I know that Zeke knew about the coup I you, was a Kaduna you I was resident at Kaduna how did you know that they killed Taba Walewa in Lagos say again how did you know they killed Taba and they could not arrest Iran from the Lagos. radio why didn't you hear this from the radio you were in the you were part and parcel of the coup plotters you know all those who sponsored you and you know those we dealt with my lord no coup plotter my lord no coup plotter is ubiquitous you were it's not everywhere you were aware that during the period you were planning the coup there was commonwealth conference holding on in lagos of course i know and even when it uh, came to a close and yet you killed tapa palewa you killed brigadier Mamalari. he wasn't killed on the day of the commonwealth conference you waited for them to go first they were not killed on the day of the commonwealth conference okay. let me put this to you that uh, you are, you would have right. been killed listen. if you have if no right to put anything to me please it listen. will take another four yes. years yes. before you start putting it to him yes you got to go my to lord i should have read law <laughs> All right, let me expatiate. I don't want to hear it. You are aware that Brigadier Mamalari was killed on his party's wedding day, the day he was organizing a party for his wedding. I heard he was killed and I wept. Very good. Because this is where I said everybody didn't agree about killing anybody. Okay. They had disagreements. So people were allowed to use their initiative. What you see on the ground is what matters. I wept because he was my mentor. He was. He was captain when I was an officer cadet. Now, were you told why Sir Abu Bakr Tabaleo was killed, was murdered, and his body thrown in the bush? I was even told that he wasn't killed. I don't know what about the, you are talking about killing. Yes, Sir Abu Bakr Tabaleo. You are told. He I know that when some people went to Abiokuta to get a motor vehicle, and they couldn't. They came back and found Iran's troops all over the place and ran away. Those who had the prime minister, I'm told, dumped him in a bush. How they dumped him in a bush, I did not, I wasn't told. No, as one of the coup plotters, did you hear the reason was, why he was killed? If you Simple. read my book, you see, it was zoned. I was in the north. I was at Kaduna. Please answer my question. Did you hear why he was killed? I wasn't was, told. Was there any justification given for killing him? Or for murdering him. Are you saying by hindsight or then? By the you, the coup plotters. Well, you see, people were being killed everywhere, particularly in the West. And so, if I may sound charitable, well, not uncharitable, he, if he was, if he was party to other killings, then if he was killed, it's one of those things. Now, since you are based in the north. Yes. You must have heard that immediately after Sardana was killed, or maybe a few weeks after, there was this picture being circulated in markets and streets of Nzegu and Samad Bello, which some northerners regarded as very provocative. I am happy you mentioned this. Yes. I was thrown into Kirikiri. Taken down when? From, from in fact, uh, about uh, we, within the first week of the coup, I was thrown into Kirikiri with others. Now, I am given to understand much later that it was because Nelson Atta publishing Drum did something in respect of publicizing Sir Ahmad Bello. All right? No sane person would like that. Thank you very much. But why is it that the same Nelson Atta, during the war, you took him to work for you? You didn't kill him, but you killed the women in the marketplace. Why did you do that? My friend, listen. You so I'm happy that you agreed that when Nelson Anta published it, people naturally overreacted. Of course. Thank you very much. But that, that's all for you. Why did you not did you not that's kill right. Nelson Anta? That's all right from me. Thank you. Why did you not kill Nelson Anta? Yes, uh, witness.